book is arguably, scholars say is arguably one of the most intelligent pieces of literature known, ancient literature known. But that does make it hard for us because it's so in depth. And I think there's two schools of thought and risks here. One is we go so deep on it that we can miss out on the overarching message, which is actually much more simple. As I think that's the problem is that the reformers just want to go so deep on what personal salvation is that they miss the overarching reason for the book, which was, hey, guys, you're all one family, get along with each other. But the purpose of those arguments is get along with each other, you're all one family. I think that helps the average reader like you and I to try. Hey, me average well, or you average? Oh, oh, not, no, <laughs> we're, at, we're, we're all average compared to some of the people who tackle this book. Yeah. I'm not saying we shouldn't let scholars dig down deep, but let's not get which I've seen a lot of people do over the years. They go, Romans is too hard. I'll just skip on. Um, Acts was great. <laughs> Acts was great. It's all, you know, exciting stuff happening in the church. I'll just skip over Romans and go on to 1 Corinthians because it's a little bit easy to understand. Yeah. It seems like Paul spent a lot of time thinking about this book. Like this is his entire argument in one. Yes. I think. Yes. Yeah. And it's like he writes the part here, which actually he like he raises a question and then he answers it later on and then loops back to that question. So uh, I actually read a lot of N.T. Wright on this book. Yep. Uh, what's the book called? Paul, Paul for, for Everyone. everyone. Yep, I remember yes. that. I think yeah. I used it for my, one of my exams as well. Yeah, and he has this, he actually says, one of the central challenges of reading Romans is to hold the whole argument in your head, seeing how it grows and develops. He's not simply writing a, sh a few short essays about different aspects of Christian truth. You've got to learn to follow the sweep of thought. And then he says here, it will leave you breathless at the power of God's truth. So good. And I would, that, I mean, I know I've been shaped by people like N.T. Wright, but that's how I, to me, I can step back and go, that's a, that's a, that's readable. That's approachable for me. That endless flow of thought that's heading somewhere. Yes. And yeah. if you know where it's heading or you know why it's written, it just avoid you getting too bogged down where you just go, this is too confusing. So he's saying, take a step back. Yeah. I agree with him there. Yep. And like, remember the question raised, we're going to go on a little journey yes. here. We're going to come and back to back it to, to hold it in your, th hold yeah. it in your mind. Yeah. And that's hard for us. This is interesting because this is a book that, to do that. You probably need to slow right down and study it.